pretty neat. That's very neat. Yeah. So that brings me to uh, a story that when Elvis first got the uh, the Lise Marie, he wanted to take everybody around Memphis. Yeah. And so tell us about that flight. Well, you know, I, I don't remember that much about it because it was all local mm -hmm. and uh, nothing really exciting happened. I think it was Christmas Eve. I'm not sure of the day. It may have been Christmas. And uh, he just called us up and said, we're going to be flying locally. So we did. We took off from Memphis and flew around, and, I don't know, 15, 20, 30 minutes, and then came back. It's kind of showing off the airplane. He was proud yeah. of owning that airplane. He was. Wasn't he? Very proud. Yeah, and he should have been. He should. And, and Ron shared some photos with me, friends. I'll put them up. Um, of the uh, the airplane, the company that 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 customized the airplane, basically, yes. you have a brochure, and I'm going to show you guys the brochure right now. And so, tell us about that. You had to go to Florida where it was redone, and you had to do some things before you could actually fly with it. Not Florida. It was uh, I went to Wichita, Kansas. That's where uh, Delta Airlines uh, traded it in because Boeing is big in Wichita. And then uh, I flew flight engineer from Wichita to Dallas Fort Worth, okay. and that's where we parked it. And then uh, had it uh, read. Well, he designed. Elvis said, "This is the way I want it done." And they done it. And then it was probably I don't know five or six months later. Then we took it from there to Long Beach. Had some work done on it there. Then we took it to Nashville. Actually, it was south of Nashville, Smyrna, right? Smyrna and had it certified. And then we brought it to Memphis. So you flew the airplane before it was customized as well. Oh, yeah. That's incredible. When it was like Delta. <clears throat> so it was just straight up seats. That's it. Yeah. Wow, that's incredible. Yeah. What did you think the first time you saw the airplane when it was customized? When it was what? When it was customized, when you picked it up when it was well, finished. Well, I was impressed with it. Yeah, it was I pretty mean, amazing, wasn't it? It was, yeah. For that time, I mean, nobody had an airplane like that. I mean, that, no. that didn't exist. <laughs> He, Elvis created so many things, didn't he? He did. Yeah. He, he's a, 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 a superstar of superstars, no, no doubt. Um, the, uh, the next story is the, well, you've told the refuel. Uh, okay, I've got, I've got one. How about um, uh, making a flight to Boston with oh, a, with small, a small crew? Yeah. It was pretty interesting because we got a call from Joe or, Vernon and said, tomorrow we're going to take off and head to Boston. And uh, so we said, well, how long will we be there? He says, just go to Boston, turn around and come back. Okay, so no big deal. So we're waiting. And here comes, I think it was Linda Thompson, somebody else, and the dog. And uh, so they have boarded the airplane and we're just waiting uh, for the rest of the people to come. And uh, nobody came. So finally the flight attendant came up. She says, uh, do we have a mechanical or what's the problem? What's the delay? And we said, no, we're just waiting for the other passengers. Said, that's it. And I said, we're taking two people and a dog to Boston? Yep, that's it. Button her up, let's go. So we did. Now the airplane burnt about roughly an average of 2,000 gallons an hour. So Boston, I guess, was two and a half hours, so it's five, so it's 10,000 gallons that we spent. I think back then, I'm not sure, but I think we were paying about 75 cents a gallon. So uh, we flew them to Boston and uh, dropped them off, turned right around and took off and came back. That's incredible. And it was Linda Thompson, and the dog was get low. Was it? Yeah. <clears throat> and I'm trying to remember, friends, I actually... I figured out it was a person that we wouldn't think that it would be, and I cannot for the life of me remember uh, who it yeah. was that was the third person. But it wasn't uh, it wasn't somebody that was that you would think would have gone. And I'll try to remember that and add that. But if I can't, maybe one of y'all know, um, and you can tell us. Well, I'm, uh, I uh, the flight was in here, but I don't remember who. Yeah, it was. and I'll I'll try to figure that out. I re I remember talking to somebody about it, but I can't recall and, what and the, the answer the was. The dog needed a special operation. And the only one that really vet in the world, or at least the U.S., uh, was capable of doing this type of operation was in Boston. Yeah. And that's the reason why we took her. Yeah. Elvis spent a lot of money trying to save that dog and unfortunately yeah. didn't make it. I yeah. think it lived about a year and a half. And that, by the way, was one of the dogs purchased at the uh, Kilgore's Pet Store story. So if you've seen that story, 
that dog was from that story. So Elvis gave you tips. Yeah. I remember seeing in the flight log, you would show like a thousand dollar tip. So you bought something special with your tips yeah. from Elvis. Well, you know, uh, the tips vary. Uh, it depends on where we're at or at a, after a tour. Uh, if the tour, if he felt that it went well, uh, it was more, but he tipped us a hundred dollars. 300 500 and a couple of times a thousand dollars so uh, we were leaving uh, uh, the Long Beach area and making the seal beach departure which means that you go out over the ocean that night and you got to really pay attention to what you're doing and uh, then you make a reverse course and we were going to Las Vegas and uh, so right after take it was my leg and it was right after takeoff Elvis came in the cockpit and he threw this check down, and I glanced at it, and I thought it was three hundred dollars. Uh, but the other pilot and the engineer was getting all excited over it, and uh, I wasn't—I just paying attention to flying. And uh, pretty soon, the other pilot said, "Ron, give me the airplane. Look at that check." And it was three thousand dollars, so that's a thousand dollars a piece. Wow! <laughs> and then I got excited, <laughs> but then. We went to Vegas. So that was a lot of money. It, you it know, was. It's still a lot of money, but I'm saying there was a lot of then money. Then it was a lot. And then I bought a, a Corvette right here uh, down uh, at a used car lot. Uh, and uh, that car I still have. And it was driven in Elvis Presley's Fruner possession. It's the only one in the world. So I still got it. So it's a yellow Corvette, 73? 73. Okay. So, friends, there's something that Ron is looking for. He was at the very end of the procession, yeah. the only Corvette in the procession, and maybe even the only car that was not white in the procession. If uh, you have any photos of it, Ron has never seen a photo of his car in that procession because everybody took pictures of all the stuff in the front. Yeah. So if you happen to have a photo of the yellow Corvette in the procession, Ron would love to see it. So I'll put my email and I'll also put Ron's email down in the description area so you can correspond with him. And if you've got a photo of it, Ron would love to see it. Yeah, you and bet. you still have that Corvette. And still when I go it. to visit you in Florida, you can drive it. We're going to take a look at it and drive it. You can drive we'll it. We'll do a little history, a yeah. little history uh, video yeah. on that because it's the only Corvette that was there in the, in the uh, uh, funeral procession. But there's also photos of you. Uh, and I'll share some of those photos right now. <clears throat> Incredible car. Really, really cool. I love that body style. <clears throat> Excuse me. Well, let me explain how I got the car in the procession. Uh, I wasn't originally supposed to be in it. And we went into the mansion for uh, the first time we buried him. And uh, I went into the back and uh, parked the car. And then we were all supposed to get into the limos and uh, go to the funeral. And uh, so when we got ready to leave, uh, you probably noticed there's tens of thousands of people lined up all the way down to the cemetery. And uh, so the highway patrolman came over and he said, uh, who owns this yellow Corvette? I says, I do. I thought, well, what the hell did I do? I ain't yeah. got nothing, you know. But uh, he says, would you mind driving to the funeral procession? And I said, no, I'd love to, but why? He says, well, you see the crowds out there. He said, we want to be able to identify the last car in the procession. And I says, no problem at all. So I did. And we drove it. And uh, then uh, after the procession or the burial was over, we were supposed to go back to the mansion. Well, I was the very last car. There was a state patrol car right behind me. And he took off with the siren going and his lights, and I just figured, well, we'll just drive right behind him. And uh, so we're going 70, 80, 90 mile an hour down the road and uh, running red lights. I mean, the siren's going and everything. And my wife says, uh, I don't think we should be here. And I said, well, I don't know. I think we're going to the mansion. And she says, when you get a chance, look in the mirror. There's nobody behind you. And I looked, and uh, later on, and I said, oh, and then we missed a turnoff to go to the mansion. And I thought, whoa, I wonder where we're going. Well, we went to the airport. And as soon as we got in there, uh, this guy jumped out of the patrol car, jumps on this airplane, and takes off. 
So I asked one of the guys from Memphis Earl, I says, hey, who in the hell was that? And they said, that was the governor of Tennessee. <laughs> wow. So uh, then we went on the airplane, my wife and I, and, and I got this comb of Alice's. I still got it. That's very cool. Yeah. So let's. Um, so you mentioned something. You said the first time we buried him. What yes. does that mean? Well, what happened is we buried him. I, I forget what hills. At the mausoleum. Yeah, yeah. at Four Seals. And uh, they had uh, people come in at night and just go through the whole thing. Yeah. So they then brought him from there to the yeah. mansion. Were you present when that happened? No. I oh, okay. Was not. Okay. So you're just aware that that happened. I just That's wanted right. to clear that yeah. up because. Yeah. I know people's ears perked up when you said that. So, yep. and um, so the, the, the where were you at the morning of August the sixteenth, nineteen seventy seven? Well, he, I was at the mansion, and I, I had to get. Uh, we were going to Portland, Maine that night, and uh, so I had to get some business done with Vernon Presley. And Vernon Presley was not that good of health. Uh, when we traveled, lots of times he brought a nurse along just in case. And uh, so I finished with him, and I talked to Elvis earlier, and I said, you know, you got some real wicked go-karts. Would, uh, and you don't mean earlier that day. You're just saying another no, time. Uh, yeah, months before that. And uh, I said, would you mind if maybe we ran those a little bit? He said, run them all you want. No. And he had some real wicked go-karts. I mean, and I think the one out in the museum is the one I drove that day, but I'm not sure of that. And uh, so anyway... Uh, I was out driving these go-karts, raising hell, I mean, having a blast. And uh, and then it got a little bit later in the day, and I, I thought, well, I better get, go home and get some sleep. But in the meantime, I saw Nancy, I think it was her cousin, escorting Vernon into the mansion. And I thought, ooh, boy, he don't look too good. And, so uh, you don't mean Nancy Rooks, the, the maid. You're saying it was... it was The cousin, or the, he worked, she worked right with... Uh, Vernon all the time. Okay. She'd done all the paperwork and the financing. And okay. Stuff was like it Becky? Oh, I don't know. I thought it was Nancy. Okay. It, it, I may, it's been many years. Yeah, I understand. Nancy doesn't ring a bell, so, so I, I don't know, happen. but we'll, I'll try to figure that out. Yeah. And uh, then correct me if you will. But anyway, uh, then I got home. But it wasn't his nurse. No, it was okay. not. Okay. It, it was uh, whoever done all the financing. It was every time I visited Vernon. Uh, it, she was there. Okay. So that may be Becky Yancey, maybe. It may have been. Okay. So anyway, uh, I got home and uh, my daughter's just crying big time. Elvis died. Elvis died. I said, no, that was probably his father. Well, I was wrong. So wow. There it goes. So then you had to divert instead of going to Portland. You made a trip to California. Tell yep. us about that. Well, uh, we were asked to go out and to Long Beach or L.A. and pick up uh, Priscilla and uh, George Hamilton, which was, I guess, a real good friend of Elvis's. And then we flew him back to Memphis, done the funeral, and then a couple of days after the funeral, we flew that, uh, her back to Long Beach and then we ferried the airplane back from Long Beach to Memphis, and that's the last time I flew it. Really? Yep. And that very last one is not in the logbook. Every other one of them is all the way up to that very is last one. I, I, yeah, I, I think you're right. Yeah, yeah, that very last one. And I think maybe that was just a sad thing for you, and you were like, okay, well, here's my logbook. i got to get off of here, yeah. and that's the end of that, and that's, that's sad. So Dick Grove tells a story that, that you guys um, – more or less, and I know you had to do some of the technical stuff, but more or less, they opened up airspace and just let you fly back. Pretty much, yeah. Tell, tell us about your correspondence with the tower. and Well, coming back, they knew it was the end. So uh, they just uh, offered their condolences, and, uh, of course, we accepted them. and just It, it was pretty much a straight flight right back to Memphis. Which is unusual. You know, you would it have to. It was back then. Right. Yes. And but the towers, as you went tower to tower to tower well, to tower, it wasn't tower is ATC. Yeah, or ATC. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And I'm not a, an airplane guy, yeah. so I don't know a whole lot about that. But that was your basically your very very last time. That was the last time. All right. Now after I brought it back here, uh, I owned a house here and that, and my wife worked for FedEx, so uh, 
we had some connections here that we had to stay. So uh, Vernon wanted to charter the airplane out to uh, off defray some of the costs. And uh, so when I finally got to talk to him after a couple of weeks, uh, he said, well, look, I want you to help me, you know, charter the airplane out. And I says, look, I will do that. But I won't accept any money. I got hired back with the airlines, and I was going to leave. I said I'll probably stay here in Memphis about a year, and I will do everything I can, and which I did. I helped him, uh, but I wouldn't accept any money. And he said, "No, no, I'm going to pay you." And I said, "No, if you send me a check, I'll tear it up." And that's the way it was. That's cool. Yeah. So, so you went back to work with the airline, but you ended up working for other places and. And the uh, having uh, flying Elvis Presley helped you get a job. Yeah. Tell well, us about that. Uh, I interviewed, uh, UPS uh, started their own airline. I had chartered with them before, but they uh, started their own airline in 88. So uh, on the resume, of course, I put pilot for Elvis Presley. And uh, the, the interviewer was looking at this, and then he says, I really got to ask you about this job. And I said, I knew what was coming. And uh, he said, were you really Elvis' pilot? I said, yeah, absolutely. So I told him a few stories, and uh, he says, you're hired. <laughs> <Just like> that. <laughs> That's incredible. Pretty yeah, good enough for the king, good enough for us, for That's sure. Right. Yeah. So uh, we'll, we'll go to, we're going to wrap up here. This is going to be the, the last thing I'm going to ask you about. Fast forward years later. Well, uh, tell us about, what, I'm, I'm sorry, let's, let's talk about this. You helped Vernon. What happened to the airplane? What what happened in that time period? Well, uh, they did chart it out to different uh, celebrities. Do you remember who the first one was by chance? Uh, yeah, but I can't recall the name right okay. now. And uh, But then uh, three people from Memphis here bought the airplane. And uh, they asked me if it was down in Fort Lauderdale or Fort Lauderdale exactly. They asked me if I would fly it back. And this is years later? Much years. This is in the, in the 80s. Okay. And uh, I think the early 80s. And I went down and looked at the airplane, and it was so screwed up, I didn't want nothing to do with it. So I told the broker, I said, I, I'm, I'm out of here. You didn't think it was airworthy? No, I didn't. Yeah. But they took it and flew it here, no problem. Yeah. And then, of course, they brought it to here at the mansion there at the museum. Yeah. And friends, we have plans to go and take Ron on the airplane and let him kind of reminisce. But you know, uh, there's Graceland has some, some filming policies and that kind of stuff. And, and maybe one day I can get permission to do that with Ron and, and we can just go on and, and, and instead of having to sneak and do it, we can just go on and do yeah. it for real. And, and that would be awesome. Um, Ron, man, you lived a life, brother. <laughs> it's been yeah. you've done a lot of stuff how, how many years did you fly well I, I uh, my initial flight when I was about 8 or 10 years old and uh, I said oh I fell in love with it I said that's what I'm going to do the rest of my life so I went to the Air Force when I was 17 and uh, I started off as an uh, aircraft and engine mechanic on a B-47 and then just worked my way on up and uh, then I got out of the military and went back and got all my licenses under the GI Bill, and then flew, and uh, I think I made a living in aviation 47 years, and then I've owned five small airplanes myself, and I quit flying in 2012. Amazing. Yeah, so uh, close to, I don't know, 25, 30,000 hours, I don't know. That's incredible. Yeah. Well, and you... just about everything that can go wrong with an airplane that can go wrong. Made it. Fortunately, I think I made about ten thousand takeoffs and equal amount of landings. So yeah, pretty good. <laughs> as long as as long as they're equal, then yeah, you're good to yeah, go. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. Ron Strauss, this has been a pleasure, my friend. My pleasure. And thank you so much.